Welcome back guys. So it has been dry. It hasn't rained in 20 days and that rain, it had been probably about 14 days, two weeks since the last rain and it was just a quick little micro burst. So we have had a extremely dry spring, like very, very dry. And that's been combined with me being very, very busy um, with the deck, with the um, pond, planting new plants, expanding, getting wood chips, and then just general work and everything. I got stuff all around me. Freaks me out when something jumps by. So anyway, stick around. We're going to talk about this insane um, drought that we're having now. Insane for us anyways. Um, and I haven't watered anything in 20 days. The grass has been um, the only thing I've watered and a little bit of the strip with the fruit trees on um, doing that foliar feed and that's it. My annuals haven't got any water so we're going to go take a look at those. Uh, going to look at how I plant my annuals, how it makes them a little more resilient because have you ever heard of someone planting tomatoes from start transplanting them and then not watering them for 20 days? Do you think they'd be alive still? For most people no. Mine also kind of know, but they're doing all right. So stick around, let's talk. resign myself to the fact that this year my annuals are going to suffer a bit because you know all that stuff I talked about with the pond and all that I've been really busy with all that with a lot of stuff so it's kind of awkward doing a gardening YouTube channel when your annuals that everyone loves are going to be kind of neglected this year I still have them I still actually planted quite a bit I'm just not going to baby them at all and I'll show you how planting in these dense polycultures like planting tomatoes under a ground cover of clover, for example, how that can actually be very beneficial. And I, I want to be really, really clear on what my goal is on this YouTube channel as well. Um, I don't want anybody to ever think that I'm some expert. I'm not an expert at all. And if you look back to my mission statement video that I made um, just over a year ago, this was me walking around um, a path at work and kind of talking to you guys saying I think I'm gonna make a YouTube channel and what can I give to you guys that you can't get from all the other gardening channels out there and the one thing I really wanted to get to you guys is that I'm not special there's nothing special about me I'm just a guy who started planting trees now I can give you some of my lessons that I've learned based off mistakes that I've made but I don't ever want anybody to think that I'm some kind of super knowledgeable guy, right? I've just done a lot of research. I've learned some stuff over the last five years. But anybody starting today, if you know nothing about gardening and you watch some of my channels and you absorb some of the lessons that I've learned and some of the um, information that I've learned, you are a thousand times more ahead of where I was when I started. So when you see my food forest and you see... Um, super lush jungles in some spots that are you know just taking over and doing really really well understand too that first off they're only about four years old five years old and the first two years it was just like four trees surrounded by grass I didn't even know what mulching was I didn't even figure mulching out until like year two and I put these little six inch rings of wood chips like quarter inch thick around my trees it's actually hilarious to me I wish I took more photos of those early uh, days but I was messing up all over the all over the place and I can get you guys past all those growing pains that I had to go through so you if you start a food forest right now this year you're about three years from um, like this these pawpaw areas you're about three years from having something like this on your own land so don't think that um, I'm some expert. I'm not special. I just planted a bunch of trees. There's nothing special about me. And you can do this because my goal with this channel above everything else 
is for you at home right now who doesn't have a food forest to one day buy a little piece of land, even if it's a tiny little cookie cutter lot, pick a corner of that backyard, start a food forest in that corner and get more food growing on trees, sequestering carbon. That's the goal. I want you planting. I don't want you stuck in analysis paralysis thinking, I need everything to be perfect and I can't make a mistake. And oh my gosh, what if I make a mistake and everything dies? Okay, I just need everybody getting out there planting trees and I'll help you avoid the mistakes. But also understand nature's resilient as all get up. Nature will be fine. You just have to get the plants in the ground, cover the soil, mulch it, take the lesson from the forest. The forest is the greatest teacher and just do what the forest does. Drop organic matter down, plant really densely so there's lots of shade and water more often than I do. So let's take a look at my gardens. I'm going to show you how resilient your gardens can be when you completely neglect them. Stun method, sheer total, sheer total utter neglect. Typically that's for fruit trees, Mark Shepard's method. Um, I'm doing them for annuals because I'm just a neglectful jerk who's busy doing other stuff. So let's take a look at that and then I want to end this clip or this video with uh, just some before and after clips of my food forest and show you guys um, how much transition I've had on my land and that could be your land like three years from now. So stick around and I hope you enjoy this one. So you can see here, um, this is an area where I had volunteer potatoes. We're growing a tomato right up. This is how I do my tomatoes. I basically string it on a line and then I just wrap it up as it goes. So this tomato plant hasn't been watered in 20 days. So the only thing that I have been doing is I've been basically chopping and dropping some of the weeds around some of these plants. So there was a bunch of thistles in here. Chop those down, drop them down. That uh, shades the soil, reveals light to the plant, but more importantly, it also gets a little bit of water from the moisture in the leaves onto the soil. Don't forget that the end of this video has those before and after clips. So you'll also see planting in these dense polycultures, like right now we have um, clover, some lupins, some daisies, uh, milkweed for the butterflies, garlic, uh, jewelweed is in there, which is a useful plant, coltsfoot's in some spots, not in this spot here, but we've got tomato plants growing happily up through them. We've got some signs for sure of underwatering. So we're actually gonna go and we're, we're gonna water um, this garden now. It's been 20 days. I don't wanna lose my crop because I'm busy doing other things. So we are gonna go water. But um, when you plant in these dense polycultures, it's very, very resistant to any kind of drought. So we've been eating some of our lettuce, um, but it's doing pretty well. It's doing pretty good. And then got some big carrots. So let's just talk about carrots quick. And I'll just keep showing you the carrots actually. So the idea with carrots and all root crops is that they'll put on green top, they'll put on green mass, and the more green mass they put on, the bigger the eventual carrot can be. So I see all the time people picking their carrots when there's still tons of green on top. Ideally, you don't want to pick these carrots until this starts to wilt and brown because that's the plant putting all that energy into the carrot. So if you see these photos of people on the internet with these tiny little carrots and they're holding big bunches of green saying, oh, I'm a bad gardener, they just picked their carrot too early. It's, it's literally that simple. So wait until your carrots, your potatoes, wait till the tops start to fall over a bit and brown and show signs that the plant is putting that energy into the root and then you'll get much bigger carrots. Specifically for carrots also, if you wait for a few frosts, each time that it hits a frost, it'll actually make the carrots sweeter. It'll convert more starches into sugars and your carrots will be sweeter. Now these specific carrots are as big as they are because, if you see, I have seed heads. So these are two carrots that I missed from last year. Um, I basically store my carrots in the ground as long as possible, but then when the ground freezes, I can't get them anymore. So these are some carrots that stored from last year. 
they're going to put seed heads on. I'll collect that seed and run it as an experiment because I have a lot of wild carrot, Queen Anne's Lace, and it'll cross-pollinate, so the, the carrot will be fine. It'll be an actual carrot. The seed will be potentially some kind of mix of Queen Anne's Lace and carrot. So it won't be reliable at all. I'll still plant actual carrot seeds next year, um, but I'd like to do a trial and practice saving some of my seed still. The bed is showing signs of no watering for 20 days. You know, I've got some kales in there, um, Egyptian walking onions, but for the most part, um, everything's just sad and smaller than it could be. So this is not optimal, obviously. I've got some collards. So, you know, plants need photosynthesis, but they need water. So if you starve them of water, they're not going to perform as much photosynthesis and grow as much plant material. So this is what a garden where you don't water looks like. Kind of sad, sad, pathetic plants. Got a couple nice garlics from um, fall planting, spring garlic not doing so great. You know, so I'm all about showing failures as well as successes. Tomatoes are pretty resilient. So all of this here is heavily wood chipped. There's a big uh, water sponge in this soil, but you can see where you have perennials, they're much more resistant to complete and utter neglect. See, and this is also why I'm moving towards um, perennial systems away from annual systems. It's just because of this. I can maintain my energy and focus on expansion and planting more food and the perennials will just stay strong and resilient whereas the annuals really need to be babied and i guess that's kind of not fair to say that annuals need to be babied when i haven't watered them in 20 days you know me watering them once every 10 days isn't exactly babying them either it's really just sheer and total and utter neglect like mark shepherd's stun method for trees but me doing it with annuals not a good idea so update on the hazelnuts i'd mentioned earlier this year that i didn't think i'd get any hazels because the timing was off and weird um, but actually we are going to get quite a few hazelnuts this year so we've got a ton of them popping out everywhere as deer flies try to bite me it's always fun so yeah we've got lots of hazelnuts so this is going to be a great for anyone who watches my videos uh, maybe two months ago I said the elderberry cuttings they look like they were taking off but the real sense is do they have leaves or not two weeks later so we haven't had rain in 20 days and this cutting is doing well and this cutting is doing well and this cutting is doing well and we have tons of cuttings this one maybe didn't make it. That might be a current. This one's doing okay. Where else do we have some? This current is doing well. These are all cuttings from just pruning this year. That current's doing well. That current's doing well. An elderberry here. See, so these dappled shade gardens are great for getting cuttings to root. And let's see, I have some in here, I think. So we've got some raspberries. Here's an elderberry cutting. This is from the other elderberry, my big one. So that one's actually doing decent. And this is all about two months later. Another elderberry cutting. So, so far so good. They all seem like they're doing all right. And I think if they're seeing that sign of health in um, 20 days of no rain, I think we should be, should be good. But again, those are all free trees. So um, this is really how you can Use some of your existing vegetation, take some cuttings with them, root them, and even just start jamming them into the ground. Keep them hydrated if you can. If you're completely neglectful like me, because um, I got busy and all that sort of stuff, then you can still get cuttings growing. We 
We got tons of free peaches here. Tons and tons of baby little peaches. So it's all about those free trees. Just keep taking cuttings, get a couple trees going, and you can really um, save a ton of money. This is also why I say um, to people, like a food forest doesn't cost you money. It costs you a little money up front to build, but once you have it, a food forest doesn't cost you money. It, it makes you money. So just get a couple trees in the ground. I'm not special. I just planted trees and researched how to do cuttings from them, and I'm teaching you guys. So you guys have more tools than I had getting started, so you can do it. If I could do it, like if this dummy could do it, you can do it. So get some, uh, get some trees going, start taking cuttings from them, and you can start propagating from your old existing cuttings. That's why I'm a big fan of focusing small, starting small. Start a small little guild, get that guild nice and dense and tight, get that shade happening, get those symbiotic relationships happening, and then you can start taking cuttings from that guild over the next couple of years as you go, and you can start expanding your food forest. Okay, so now let's take a look at some before and after shots of various sections on my property. Unfortunately, I don't have that many before shots. I wish I took more. So if you're just starting this, take tons of before shots. You'll want them later. Um, so enjoy this, and uh, this is about three years before and after. So if you start now, this is what you got in three years. If there's one thing I want you guys to get from my YouTube channel, it's that if this doofus can do it, you can do it. I'm not special. There's nothing special about me. I just started planting plants and kept...